I'm back and you're going back to school, so we are making edible school supplies. My name is Lori and you are watching The Icing Artist. Before we get started, let's go pick up some supplies. Road trip! I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for, but definitely some school supplies and candies, maybe some icing, different stuff I can make things with. I know this is old school, but I'm going to need to do some of these. Okay, I definitely just found my 2019 planner. We got a ton of stuff to work with, so let's get started. First up, I got this cute mini little paint set, but instead of paint, we're gonna do icing, because you can basically paint with icing anyway. But before we do anything, we need to clean out these containers with soap and water and make sure they are very clean. You do not want paint tasting icing when it comes out of it. And make sure if you guys are doing anything like this, all of the products are non-toxic. We're trying to have fun here, not kill anybody. Now you can make your own icing and color your own colors, but I was feeling particularly lazy and just bought all of my icing and bought it pre-colored because you know what? I don't got time for that. Apparently I'm making a ton of stuff for you guys today. I bought all the colors of the rainbow, but for black and white, I just used my store-bought white icing and then colored that black for my black one. I even took this whole thing one step further and bought a mini canvas so I can make an edible icing masterpiece. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, hit that subscribe button down below, I dare you. Next up, we're going to do edible glue using icing. I have seen people use milk and yogurt and even water. Why? When you could use icing, it's white, it's gonna look creamy, it's gonna look like glue, but actually tastes good. Once your glue container is emptied out and washed out very carefully, make sure you get all those crevices inside the glue container and the lid. It is time to get our icing ready to pour into the glue container. Again, I'm just gonna use store-bought icing for this, but if you are feeling energetic, man, feel free to make your own. With a store-bought icing, I'm going to water it down because glue would not come out this consistency. If we try to squeeze this out of the container, it is not gonna come out. So I'm just gonna use some water and my spatula and just mix that up and add lots of water until I have the same consistency as I had glue. Looks so realistic, but delicious. Mm. Perfect on cookies too. But glue sticks can also be super handy in class. Instead of icing for this one, we're gonna do Starburst. You wanna take apart your glue stick and make sure you have that little bottom piece. Clean out the container and that little bottom piece super carefully. Once they're dry, I just pop that little bottom piece back into the glue stick and this is so it can actually twist up and down like a glue stick normally would. I'm gonna unwrap all of my Starburst and I saw people just try to push the, the glue stick into them like this. They struggled hard. If, if you migrate your Starburst for a couple seconds, it's going to soften them slightly. So when you push down on that glue stick, it's just gonna go in like butter. But be warned, do not melt Starburst too long in the microwave because otherwise you're gonna end up with a molten candy lava mess. Just looking for soft and pliable here, not melted. You just wanna push in one color after another and it's gonna create this really cute, not like ombre effect, but kinda of depending on what colors you guys use. Once it's done, you twist back up and enjoy. But Starbursts are also super handy for making stuff like rulers or erasers. I'm gonna do my ruler yellow because all of my rulers in school were yellow. So I'm just gonna wrap a bunch of yellow Starbursts and microwave them. Again, you just want it to be soft and pliable, basically so we can mold them around into a ball with our hands. I'm gonna kind of stretch out the rough shape I'm looking for, and once I have that, I'm gonna use my rolling pin to roll it out. It works a lot like fondant, just kind of stickier. And to keep it from sticking to my table, I just used some parchment paper and rolled out the ruler on top of that. I'm gonna use an actual mini ruler to lay that right on top and just use a knife to carefully, very carefully, to cut out my candy ruler. And because it's actually the exact same size, when I draw on all of my little lines using my edible marker, not a Sharpie, you're using edible markers here, everything's edible, you can actually use this ruler to measure stuff, but it's gonna double purpose as a snack. I love yellow Starburst, but for the racer, we're gonna use pink ones. Starting off, and again, the very similar way, we're just gonna heat up our pink Starburst until they're nice and pliable. I'm gonna mold them, except this time, we're gonna do a little bit of a rectangle. I'm making that old school, traditional eraser that I had in school. 
and I'm actually gonna use those erasers as my guide when I'm rolling out the Starburst to figure out how thick it's gonna be. If you turn all of them up on their edge, you can figure out the thickness for the side as well. And I just kind of rotated back and forth, flipping back and forth, rolling a little bit until I got the exact size I was looking for. For the edges, I'm just gonna use my knife and very carefully cut that down on a diagonal. The candy eraser might not be as functional as our candy ruler, but it still tastes good. The next one might be one of the easiest, but it is also one of my favorites. We're making gum tape. <laughs> gonna start off by taking that tape out of the dispenser. We don't need that. And I'm also gonna take out the cardboard. Now I found a circle cutter that fit perfectly into my tape container. And I'm just gonna wrap my gum carefully around that. Keep comparing it to my tape container because I wanna get as much gum in this as possible, but without it kind of overflowing and not fitting into the container. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna use that circle cutter to place almost as a guide right on top of the gum container and slide the gum off and you are good to go. Cut yourself off a piece and you could have a bubble gum contest. Bubble gum, bubble contest. Crayons are pretty cool, but chocolate crayons are even better. I'm just gonna use a bubble straw as my crayon mold. They are basically the same size. I'm going to cut the length of it a little bit because we don't want it to be too long. And then just use some Starburst to plug the one end so that way my melted chocolate doesn't go pouring out the end of it. Melt down some colored chocolate of my crayons of choice. And then I'm gonna pour that melted chocolate into a Ziploc bag, push out all of the air and close it, and then just cut off the corner and pipe that right into my straw. After doing the first one, I realized that that plug on the end kind of created this air gap that I couldn't push the chocolate into. So I popped that plug out, filled up the straws completely with chocolate, and once they were filled, I just put that Starburst right back into the end of it. While those cool and set up, because you want them to dry completely before doing anything else with them, I'm gonna get my labels ready. Now you could print out your own, you could even print out your own on edible paper, but I decided to use the actual crayon labels for this. So I carefully, very carefully cut off the labels off the crayon. Now my chocolate's been setting for a couple hours, so I am ready to cut them off. Now the same way that I cut the labels off of our crayons, I'm gonna cut the straws off of our chocolate crayons. Once I've kind of released it with the cut, I'm just gonna pop them out using a cake pop stick. Now I bought a brand new sharpener just for this so that way I could sharpen the tips of the chocolate and this worked perfectly. Then you just wanna cut off the excess chocolate at the end so that way your chocolate crayons are the same size as actual crayons and wrap that label around them. And the best part is they actually work. You can use your chocolate edible crayons on edible paper and make a complete edible drawing. But if that's not your style, you can dry them by themselves or even the shavings. But there is more than one way that you can use edible paper. You don't just need chocolate crayons. You can also use edible markers to write completely edible notes in class. The thing with notes, you don't wanna get caught or anybody to see your note. With edible notes, you can just quickly eat them Lori, are you passing notes? But you can also use edible paper to make fun and yummy notebook covers. And it works just like markers and paper, so you can get really creative with this. I decided to use a heart cookie cutter to mark out my heart in my black marker and then fill it in with a pretty little scribbly rainbow. And then write a cute little message and decorate it up. It'll be a hidden treat no one will suspect. Edible paper not your thing? That is perfectly fine, I completely get it. But I also have a candy solution for you. Rainbow belts are the perfect candy shape to stick inside notebook sleeve. As long as your notebook has one of those plastic sleeves on it, you can stick anything inside of it. I'm gonna use long ones to outline the page, kind of creating a border. I'm gonna have the edges overlapping on each one of them and then cut them straight down both candy belts on the corner to kind of miter the edges. Once that is done, I'm just gonna fill the entire middle section, kind of alternating back and forth with the smaller candy belts. I'm gonna kinda cut one of them so that way they can alternate. And as I do this, it's gonna create this really fun little pattern on the inside. But you can do whatever you want and have fun with it. And when you're getting hungry, just slide one out and enjoy. But rainbow belts can also make the cutest and tastiest little bookmark. You wanna find a bookmark with a little dangly bit on it. Thank you, Bo Beep. And then you wanna steal that dangly bit. You wanna just punch a hole on the end of the candy belt. You guys can use a hole buncher, a straw, or even a piping tip, whatever is gonna create a little tiny hole. Simply just wrap that dangly bit through the hole and you've got a super cute bookmark that also doubles as a midnight snack. It is so good. 
I am so obsessed with how all of these turned out. I love them. I hope you guys really like them too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget to come back here again next week so we can make something else in the cake or candy or school supplies or whatever I happen to be making that week. Bye.